Brad Stevens made two splashes for the Celtics this offseason, bringing in Kristaps Porzingis and Drew Holiday to this abundance of a starting five. And we've already seen Kristaps Porzingis lock up his long-term extension but with Drew Holiday excelling from the three-point range and being a fantastic two-way player for the Celtics. What could his contract be long-term for this squad? He said that he wants to stay with this Celtics team, and we're going to be diving in, looking at what his contract could be and how it will affect the Boston Celtics for the future. Plus, we'll be looking at the Celtics potentially going for their 15th roster spot as they visit Utah today. All of that and more on this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez. Before we get into all of this Boston Celtics news though, I would like to say that 73% of our viewers are not subscribed. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that big old red subscribe button down below. To the thousands of you guys who watch our videos every single day, who want to make sure you stay up to date on the daily Boston Celtics content and coverage like this, make sure you stay at the subscribe button as this is the place for you. But without further ado, let's get into all of this news, all of this jazz. Make sure to grab a snack as it is going to be a jam-packed episode. And let's dive in, looking at the first topic at hand today, which is the Celtics possibly exploring that final roster spot. Now, I mentioned in the introduction that the Celtics were going to Utah, and that is to look at superstar Isaiah Thomas and a possible reunion with this Celtics squad. We already made a video talking about it earlier, how Isaiah Thomas said he'd love to just be on the Celtics as a veteran guy, and it could possibly happen by the end of the season. Celtics head coach Joe Mazzulla and assistant coach Tony Dobbins are here at the Herd Stars G League game in Salt Lake City watching Isaiah Thomas and several other former NBA players and college standouts per the G League. And this was from Gary Washburn who works for the Boston Globe and got this news, which is absolutely fantastic. Personally, I'd love to see Isaiah Thomas back in the green and gold, even if he's not going to be a confident piece, even if he's going to be the 15th man as a veteran locker room presence. We've seen the Miami Heat do it with Udonis Haslam, and I truly think that the Boston Celtics could do the same thing representing Isaiah Thomas and having him be that great veteran locker room presence. He's also been cooking it up in the G League. The last two games, he dropped 30 plus, And in today's game, as we can see from this tweet from Jay King, he finished with 34 points today, also had seven rebounds and five assists, playing in front of a whole bunch of rowdy elementary uh, schoolers because the game has already happened. It's kind of crazy. We're in Utah a couple years, a couple times back, but game was an early morning afternoon game, and Isaiah Thomas absolutely cooked up. He's put up, like I mentioned, 30 in the past three times he's played in the G League, and he could easily said that he could put up 40 or 50 if he gets his feet underneath him. I truly think that he definitely deserves a spot in this league, even if it's not with the Boston Celtics. Someone should desperately look to pick him up, and maybe have him have him for their playoff roster. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Would you guys like to bring Isaiah Thomas back to Boston and have him in the green and gold? Even though he might not play, you know, 15, 20 minutes, just having him as a veteran piece and just having him to play some garbage end minutes would be, I think, fantastic for the Celtics fans to see again. And it'd be a great reunion between him and the team that made him big. But without further ado, let's dive into the main topic at hand today, which is discussing how Drew Holiday needs to be extended. Now, Drew Holiday, in my personal opinion, has been absolutely balling out for this Celtic squad and has proven that he deserves to be here long term. And he himself has said that he wants to stay long term as well. Drew Holiday, if you guys did not know, before he was traded to the Celtics, wanted to stay in Milwaukee for the rest of his career and honestly retire after the, his last, his next contract. But after that whole debacle with him getting traded to Portland and now arriving in Boston, it seems like Boston is the place that he's going to want to stay long term. And it's clear that the Celtics fans want him there and the Celtics organization does as well. If we want to dive in and look, we can look at how great he has been for the Celtics this year. As we know, Drew Holiday has been an exceptional three-point shooter. He's officially a top five three-point shooter in the NBA this season, per Noah Dalzell. As Holiday is shooting a third, is showing, shooting, excuse me, 37% from the career on three-point shooting, and he's had 110 threes on 44% efficiency. Since February 1st, Drew Holiday is also shooting 52% from the three, which is just absolutely ridiculous. We already know Drew Holiday excels at hitting his corner threes as he's one of the best corner three-point shooters in the NBA, hitting at a clip at around 66%, which is every two or th out of three threes from that corner, he is nailing, which is just an absolute insane stat to hear from a guy who sacrificed a lot on the offensive side of the ball, obviously being a second and third star for most of his career and winning a championship as a second, third star with Giannis and Chris Middleton. He's had to take a decreased role in the offense for the Boston Celtics, playing alongside superstars in Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Kristaps Porzingis, Derek White. He's ultimately been this fifth option for this offense. And when players need or out, he does step up for the Celtics and is way more consistent on the offensive side of the ball. We also want to dive in and look at this tweet from Noah Dalzell again, who provides great coverage for the Celtics. 
but she said that Paul George on his podcast says that Drew Holiday is the toughest player for him to score on, saying he's got locks, he's strong as blank, he's quick, and he loves to play defense. That's the worst trait you can go up against somebody that loves to play defense. And that's true. Drew Holiday embodies that on this Celtics team. We've already seen with the stock exchange, Derek White and Drew Holiday, both of those guys really buying into this defensive side of the floor and playmaking and letting the guys like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum cook up on the offensive side. We've also seen Jalen Brown excel fantastically on the defensive side of the ball as well this year. He's pushing for an all-defensive first team. J.J. Redick thinks that he could possibly make it, and I do too. But let's kind of dive in, look at Drew Holiday, and kind of look at the complications that would be, you know, keeping Drew Holiday and keeping him long-term. Obviously, first, we want to look at his stats so we can look and see that he's averaging 13 points, 5.6 total rebounds, and 5 assists on 49% shooting from the field, 40 six 45 percent shooting from three which is absolutely ridiculous eight percent up from his 37 percent from his career and 83 percent from the free throw it's clearly because he doesn't have to take as many consistent shots on this celtics offense drew holiday on a max day of nights is maybe on a less night he's taken eight to ten shots on a max night 15 to 20 but he's not you know that generational guy that's going to have to be looked for that offensive side he's just going to be a guy that the celtics use when they need him in crunch time when they need when guys like Kristaps porzingis or Jalen brown are out or even when that offense is you know flowing through him and they find him open in the corner three it desperately works we want to look at his offensive and defensive stats as well from his advanced stats as we can see he's a top 88 percentile on the offensive being a terrific passer portability being able to create and also having a fantastic true shooting percentage and on the defensive side of the ball a top 77 percent player basically excelling in every single category besides rim frequency which is understandable as Drew Holiday is a guard, but he does take on those big man assignments. We've seen him notoriously guard Nikola Jokic in the last game that we played the Denver Nuggets. We also saw him guard guys like Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, we've seen Joel Embiid. We've seen him take the big man or, you know, the team's best player on the offensive side of the ball. And that's a big thing to see out of a guy like Drew Holiday. But let's kind of get into the cap situation and get to how this extension would have to work. Obviously, Drew Holiday this year is making right around $36 million. We know Kristaps Porzingis was making that this year as well. Like we mentioned in the intro, Kristaps Porzingis is already wrapped up long-term for the Boston Celtics. He signed a three-year $30 million extension at the end of, at the beginning of this season, excuse me. So Drew Holiday is the next guy that the Celtics have to extend. Now, the only other implications is Jason Tatum's going to be up. We already extended Jalen Brown. Derek White's going to be needing an extension. So we're going to have to, you know, kind of figure out how we're going to have to do this. But if we look at our restricted free agents and who we could possibly lose drew holiday is the main commodity now i do think that the celtics will give him a contract he will stay locked up with the celtics and i do think it will be a little bit cheaper than that 39 million dollars i do think that'll be in that 25 to 30 million dollar range maybe 28 million dollars for a two to three year long-term deal and i think that's a perfect fit for him and for the boston celtics when the Celtics then look to extend guys like Jason Tatum, look to extend guys like Derek White, I do think that Jason Tatum will get his max like Jalen Brown did, and I expect to see Derek White get a similar contract around Drew Holiday, around the 25 to $30 million range, as this Celtics core want to stay intact and make sure that this team is ready to go, heading deep into that playoff push and heading into, you know, this, you know, dynasty that the Celtics are trying to build. If we want to look at some other guys that the Celtics could bring back as well. Sfi, I don't really know. They don't have his bird rights. Luke Cornett has been excelling for the Celtics. I think that they'll bring him back as he's a great locker room presence. Sam Hauser has that club option. The club will definitely want him back after his season high last night with 22 points. And Xavier Tillman having his bird rights, he's going to be a guy that I think if the Celtics experiment with, he will be locked up long term. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about Drew Holiday and his extension and possibly Isaiah Thomas staying long term or possibly being with this team for the 15th spot. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Celtics Digest and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.